Every 10 years, the country participates in a census, and one of the outcomes is the redrawing of district lines at both the state and federal levels to reflect shifts in population. We've just come through this lengthy process, so let's spend five minutes discussing it with State Representative Carrie Benninghoff. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, why do these lines need to be redrawn every 10 years? I mean, we do this census, but wh why do the districts have to change? Well, the Constitution requires that we have fair representation for every member of our communities, whether it's the state of Pennsylvania or the country. And mm -hmm. with the decision of one man, one vote, we want to make sure that's as accurate as possible. Uh, the country does a census, and that information is passed down to the states, and there are new legislative districts drawn both on the Commonwealth level and that of the federal level. Uh, those drawn for the federal level are actually done as a piece of legislation by us within the legislature, and the ones for the Commonwealth are done by a commission, a five-person commission, generally representatives from each of the caucuses and each of the parties, and then a fifth uh, objective individual, which oftentimes is a retired judge or someone, and they look at the population. The state of Pennsylvania has grown slightly, but not a lot, uh, to about 12.6 uh, million people, billion people, pardon me, and uh, therefore, our growth has not been as significant as many other states, and we're actually going to lose a congressperson this time. Sadly, we lost two in the last reapportionment, and that cuts down our representation in Washington, and oftentimes appropriations that would come to us advocated by those individuals can be less because of that. So it's very important we have an accurate count. I imagine it's pretty difficult and it's like putting a puzzle together to come up with these maps. Uh, what type of criteria do the folks that are drawing the maps have to follow? Well, as you know, we have the population, I said, roughly around 12.6 billion people and they have to divide it by 203 legislative house seats and 50 senatorial seats. And it is important in Pennsylvania that we require a certain percentage of representation of a member towards their population. And it ranges somewhere between 61.5 thousand people to no more than 64.4 thousand um, people. And we like to try to keep it even closer than that. And more importantly, we do our very best to try and not cut up municipalities or break them up mm -hmm. and have more than one representative. Unfortunately, geographical barriers sometimes don't allow that ridge, uh, mountain ridges, waterways. Uh, the important thing is that you have to be congruent. You cannot have a township that is not connected to another township as part of a legislative district. And we try to make them as compact as possible. And I think the commission has done a really good job this year on trying to meet those criteria. Uh, there's been concern over the years that they're gerrymandered or trying to favor one political party over another, and they have some pretty um, obscured type of diagrams for geographic boundaries, and I don't think that occurred this year to that magnitude, especially in the House, and I'm, I'm proud to say that I think they did a good job. And just generally speaking, where are some of the growth and decline areas in the state, and how did that affect? Well, we've seen a pretty big swing from the west to the east in the state of Pennsylvania, and then you have spotty growth in Monroe County, Lancaster, uh, Berks County has had some significant growth. Uh, some of the representatives down there will joke they no sooner build a school and it's full and they have to build another one. And so therefore, some of those people are actually going to pick up new legislative districts. Uh, we'll be moving a district out of Erie, uh, the fifth uh, House District will actually be down in uh, the Berks County area. Mm -hmm. Now that member has chosen to retire, which made that a little bit easier to absorb those population up in that area and allows us to physically uh, move that number on the map. It doesn't change anything otherwise. And um, it's not always a pretty process, but it's an important process. And more importantly, um, I'm glad we're meeting a deadline. We're getting pretty close here. We're getting a new election cycle. but. Uh, I think it's been a pretty fair process overall. And then just to wrap up, generally, how has your area changed? Well, I have kind of an interesting challenge in our area. Our county has 40,000 students that come intermittently, but they are counted as part of our population. Uh -huh. So is the penal institution, which currently houses 2,500 inmates, and we'll be picking up 2,000 more. So some areas are kind of skewed by uh, intermittent populations. Uh, we've had some pretty good growth overall, and so I will have some changes. And I'm actually going to be moving southern uh, within the state as that push comes from the west. I'll be moved out of Center County a little bit, a little bit more into Mifflin County, mm -hmm. but it is still a little bit more compact than it was. And I'm looking forward. This is actually my third district I'll represent because I came in the middle of a a redistricting cycle back in 96. And it uh, comes around pretty fast. But uh, we're looking forward to representing whoever it is that we get. Well, thanks for spending time with us today. Thank you. And if you have comments or questions about this or any other legislative topic, Representative Benninghoff's contact information will be shown in just a few seconds. Thanks for spending five minutes with State Representative Carrie Benninghoff.